President Trump introduced his budget this week, which includes $2.7 billion for immigration enforcement, border security, and the wall. The proposal targets sanctuary cities as well, calling for local police to follow federal immigration laws if they want to receive government money. Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel is bucking the president's new orders, and he's launched a new ad campaign promising the Windy City will continue to welcome immigrants. It's incumbent for us to use our voice to make sure that those who are dreamers, those who have called Chicago home, those who may not have all their papers in order, are welcome. Joining me now is Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel. Thank you so much for joining me, Mr. Mayor. I want to start Thanks, with some statistics. Thank you. Thank you. I want to start with some statistics. Immigration-related arrests are up 38 percent under President Trump, but deportations were actually higher during the first four months of last year when President Trump was still in office. And I don't remember you complaining about deportations when the Democrats were in charge. So why now? Yeah, I think you meant President Obama, but that said, what the whole purpose here is because our the kids that go to our schools, the dreamers, all the kids, we have 140 languages spoken in our schools. Those kids and their families are frightened. And it's incumbent as a city, whether you're from Ireland or India, Poland or Pakistan, Mexico or Moldova, where my grandfather came from, those children are part of the Chicago family. And their parents are doing working incredibly hard. They sacrifice, they struggle, so their kids could not only come to a place called America, but specifically Chicago. And I think Chicago will always represent the promise of America. If you believe that tomorrow can be better than today, you are welcomed here. And I want those families to know and their children to know that if you believe in America and you believe in tomorrow, which is what we always believe here, you are welcomed. And it's not just being a sanctuary city, it's being a welcoming city that it was to my grandfather a hundred years ago when he came to Chicago fleeing the pogroms of Eastern Europe and he was only 13 years old. That is not only our past. If you look to the future, immigrants are a vibrant part of that uh, future and I want them to feel welcomed here because it is who we are as a city. It is everything that has built the city out of many one the trump administration is asking congress to require local police officers to enforce federal immigration law now under this new law local law enforcement would have to hold undocumented immigrants after they would normally be released from jail so that federal federal agents can pick them up will you order cops in chicago to comply with that now you and look you know the values first of all this is all in court you know our position, and it's not just uh, Chicago, but it's big, small, medium-sized cities across the country from every part of the country. We're going to do law enforcement the way we do it, which is community policing. Our police department, if we were to ever be subject of some sense of uh, uh, scrutiny by the community, they won't come forward. Your safety on the streets is built on relationships between community and police in a level of trust. And if you violate that trust, you but, violate the ability to accomplish what you want. So, but if no, it I ends mean, up the police department and all, uh, but you're asking me a hypothetical. The court's about to decide that decision. They've already made some implication that the administration way overshot the runway. They've now had to recalibrate. And I believe we're not only on solid legal ground. The city of Chicago, like New York, L.A., Boston, and other cities that have embraced being welcoming cities, we're on solid moral ground. Mr. Mayor, I want to show our viewers a flyer, which, according to local Chicago reports, are cropping up in Chicago neighborhoods with large numbers of African-American residents. It says ISOM. And the flyers uh, basically say that sanctuary cities endanger the livelihood of every American while violating federal law and destroying the black community. It's no secret that you've had some problems with the black community in your city. What do you say to that sentiment that this flyer is trying to put forward that it seems as though they're worried that you're trying to help one group at the expense of another? Well, first of all, that's, I disagree with your characterization and your question uh, fully. But that said, bringing people together is exactly what the campaign One Chicago is about. And the first ad, if you would look at it, is an a immigrant, uh, a refugee, actually, was from Somalia and about how Chicago welcomed him and then his family joined him. And in fact, we uh, launched this campaign at DeSable Museum on the south side of the city of Chicago. Sure, there are people that will try to play divisive politics. My job as mayor 
is to find that common ground and, and aspire to our better angels rather than try to use politics to divide people and assume that one group means that you lose. It's not true. Mayor Manuel, unfortunately, as you know, Chicago is the second deadliest city in America. On multiple occasions, President Trump has tweeted that if you can't handle the situation, you need to ask for help and he will give it to you. Yes. Uh, I know that you are now pushing to hire more police officers, but some are asking, why didn't you do that sooner? Yeah. Well, the truth is, we have actually added officers and we're also getting kids, guns and drugs off the street. And I know that they uh, have, the Wall Street Journal noted a recent story about the progress that's been made in exactly doing what we're supposed to do, which is cramp down on the shootings. And actually, we are this year, we're down 14% four, uh, on shootings. And in the toughest neighborhoods on the south and west side that it, where this is predominant, the gun violence, we're actually seeing more dramatic reductions in that effort. So in fact, we're making that type of progress. I can't have Rahm Emanuel on and not talk a little bit of politics with you. So uh, let's go back to 2006 when you led Democratic I can't be on CNN efforts. without you guys talking a little bit of politics. <laughs> there you go. But this is this is something that you want to remember fondly, which is that you uh, led the efforts to retake control of Congress for Democrats back in 2006. But you're not feeling so good about the prospects this year. I want our viewers to hear what you said at Stanford University. It took us a long time to get this low. It ain't gonna happen in 2018. Take a chill pill, man. This is, a, you gotta be in this for the long haul. So you don't think the Democrats are gonna take the House back in 2018? No, I actually, what I disagree with is an approach that assumes it's only about one election. We're down over the last eight years about 1,100 Democrats. You're not gonna solve it in 2018. The Republicans didn't do what they did with just one election cycle and mindset. You have to have a long horizon obviously, uh, and work towards that, electing people at the local level, state houses, into Congress. Now, your question is only, because you're in nationally, is only about Congress. But the question is, what are we doing about state houses? Mm -hmm. What are we doing to recruit candidates to run for uh, uh, other types of offices at a local level? And my point was, and, uh, and I stand by it, is if you think this is going to happen in, in entirely in just one cycle, you're going to turn around the uh, years of eroding Democratic uh, support at the local level, you're not having the right perspective. Mm -hmm. I, do I think we're going to have a, a good year in 2018? Yes. Do I think everything's going to be solved in a single cycle? That's not how we got here, and it's not going to be how we get out. Hillary Clinton reemerged on Friday with a commencement address at her alma mater, Wellesley College, and the speech drew parallels between Donald Trump and Richard Nixon. If Hillary Clinton is, is up for another presidential run, would that be a good thing for your party? You know, look, you're asking something that we're not even first through the midterm election. She hasn't even declared for me to say that. That's like I know, but a, that's the question. Do you think she you should? Think, well, it's not. A, I love you. It's not a good question. Okay, so the question is, Why it's not? not a good question. She we sounded a, we, like she could a be a candidate again. Would you be? Would you think that's a good she idea? You're a party she, leader. She, 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 I happen to love Hillary, and I think she's full of energy. And I happen to think there's a lot of time between now and the presidential, and she has to decide whether that's in her heart. We have a lot of time between now and the presidential election of 2020. Hillary has a lot to offer. The core question is not whether I think she, uh, she would be a good candidate, it's whether she wants mm -hmm. to run. Because at the end of the day, the public's pretty smart. And if it's only going through the motion, they'll pick that up. Thank you so much, Mayor Rahm Emanuel, for joining me on this holiday Thank weekend. You. Appreciate it.